Tokyo Disney Sea. Man, fam, we're at Tokyo Disney Sea, Tokyo Disneyland's second theme park. We're gonna be riding some attractions, seeing some shows, eating some snacks. It's gonna be a great day. This is me and Alan's first time here ever. Max has been a while, and this is often revered as the best Disney park in the world. I am so excited. It's so beautiful here. Let's go have an amazing day. Let's go. But wait, just like Tokyo Disneyland, there are different filming policies and cultural norms here at Tokyo Disney Sea, so you may see some differences in our style today, but we'll still bring you along on all the fun. We started the day by making my dream of riding the cutest monorail ever come true with the Mickey windows and the Mickey handles inside. It's absolutely adorable. Now, the Disneyland monorail in Tokyo Disneyland has four different stops. The Disneyland Hotel, right outside where we were staying in Disneyland Park. Then there's Bayside, which is closer to some of the other hotels, like the Toy Story Hotel, the Disney Sea Stop, and then Resort Gateway, which is kind of your entrance into the property as a whole. One thing very different about the monorail here compared to the U.S. parks is it actually costs money. It operates the same way as a train would in the city of Tokyo. Now, it's not very much. It's a dollar or two-ish for each time we got on to go between our hotel two stops to Disney Sea, but just something to keep in mind when you're booking a trip. Now there's a lot of hype for Tokyo Disney Sea. Every single person I know that's been there says it's the best theme park in the world. And they're right. It is so unbelievably beautiful when you walk in. It it stunned me. I didn't have much to say because it was so beautiful walking in. You do not feel like you're in a theme park. And then what you can see, there's twice that much. Uh, it continues on and you will spend the next few days or the time that you're there exploring and finding new places. It's, it, it's stunning. It, it left me speechless. Now I love a castle park with the castle reveal, but this was hands down the best reveal into any space that I've ever been in ever. I didn't believe I was in a theme park, to be honest with you at first. Um, and that just has to do with the beautiful theming, how everything is so wonderfully built. It's just absolutely mind-blowing. Even now, thinking back into that moment, I'm having trouble articulating exactly how I felt because it was just so overwhelming. One of my favorite things about Tokyo Disney Sea when I visited the first time is the way that this park just reveals itself to you. There's so much park behind that mountain that you just can't even see. I'm so excited to continue to see Molly and Alan uh, see you know, more and more of this park that right now is not even evident to the eye. Now each one of the lands at Disney Sea is a different port. The seven lands being Mediterranean Harbor, where you enter, the American Waterfront, Port Discovery, the Mysterious Island, which is very Jules Verne-y, Mermaid Lagoon, where you actually go under the sea, the Arabian Coast, and the Lost River Delta, which is sort of jungle-themed. Quick note that there is a Skip the Line service at Tokyo Disney Sea. Uh, there is Premier Access, which is similar to a fancy ride in Walt Disney World or Disneyland, where you pay per person per attraction to select what time you'd like to go. There's also right now a 40th Priority Access, which is a free service for some other popular attractions throughout the park, but that operates like Genie Plus, where it's a first come, first served, next available system. And note, you can't book anything until you're inside the park like Disneyland. 
Disney Sea is basically what happens when the Imagineers don't have a budget. Because the Oriental Land Company owns the parks versus the Disney Company itself, and they had a much higher budget, you can tell. Okay, so that's a beautiful boat there, but also connecting to the actual sea. Wait, that's the real... Yes, that is the real sea. There's sharks out there. That's unbelievable. I didn't even realize that. I knew that, but I didn't know that. You know what I mean? I knew this was on the sea, but I didn't remember. It's very, very incredible. You know, I can't help but notice as we go under and into this volcano that that's all lava. Yeah. You might have been asking yourselves, why are they here? It's probably to go to a theme park, but what you didn't realize is that we may be doing some under the table business deals while we're here as well. You no, know, they've got a volcano here. What do you mean no? No. Alan, we talked about this. You already approved our under the table business deal. When we were not on camera at all, you said that we could take lava from Tokyo Disney Sea, fly about it in customs, and use it to start our business. You said that. I, I, That's what I heard. I, that, you said that. No. Now, oh, you're changing your tune now that we're on camera. We know. Just, just, Alan? It's okay. We got it. We got it, buddy. You can trust us. Yeah. You got, do you have the U.S. Embassy on standby? You got a fence for us? We are kicking off our attractions here at Tokyo Disney Sea with an absolute banger. This is Journey to the Center of the Earth. Themed after the Jules Verne novel, this one will take you into the middle of the icon of the park, the volcano. It is a thrill ride, I guess pseudo roller coaster, but only one car. Um, and it features a very cool animatronic. Uh, as well as a little bit of excitement. So, looking forward to Molly and Alan experiencing this for the first time. It is one of the most popular attractions at the park, and we have purchased Premier Access to get to go on it quickly. Are you done? Yeah. Oh, I didn't want to hear anything. I know literally nothing about this ride. Max could have gotten me on a water ride this way by saying, I know everyone likes this ride. It's like the best ride here. I literally know nothing about it but I don't think it's a water ride. Or Max would not be so enthusiastic. <laughs> That was cool. Yeah, what do we think? I got scared. Did you? It was a you little did. Scary. Well, I had a little bit of a jump. I got a jump scare. <laughs> that, was a, that was a very loud lightning strike. Underground? <laughs> yep. You know, you know the underground lightning. Yeah, Classic. I mean, I, own weather formations, I, the whole nine. I, I saw a lot of lava. Uh huh. But then I was immediately distracted by the giant monster. Sure. Seemingly yes. made of. Insect Kong. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, we uh, got the hell out of Dodge. We did, yep. We erupt after you see the monster deep in the center of the earth. You uh, drive out and erupt out of the volcano. And then you would drop speed. and you can see all the park. It's really it's beautiful. Very it's cool. a very cool ride. It reminded me a little bit style wise as like Dinosaur Indiana Jones, yeah. where it's like hard dark ride and then it gets thrilling and scary. Yeah. but smooth and a completely different ride vehicle with just yeah. kind of the vibes. The ride vehicle itself also, I just want Very to give like pretty. kudos, amazing ride vehicle. The whole section right here is cool. We were just looking at the Nautilus down here. This is in the 20,000 Leagues ride. It's just a set piece and it's all very like, steampunk and metal. And I love the like teal aged, like it's just very beautiful. Unlike anything I've seen in the park. And now we have... We're gonna go from one Nemo to the next. That's right, Sea Rider. We've come down a set of stairs that somehow magically led us into Port Discovery, which is on the sea. And we are headed into the Marine Life Institute to ride Nemo and Friends Sea Rider, which is a simulator attraction that takes you through different parts of the sea. I'm assuming with Nemo and Friends. I'm also assuming they're gonna speak in Japanese, but I'm most of all hoping that we see Bruce the Shark. Essentially, Sea Rider is the result of humans wanting to explore the ocean and spend time with fish. But being the size that humans are and the vessels we built, we would scare the fish away. So the Sea Rider is a vessel that we get in that shrinks down to the size of the fish and looks like a fish so that we can hang out with the fish. Because they think we're a fish. <laughs> Oh, 
attraction was just such a little fun exploration. What a creative concept yeah. uh, and a, a new and unique way to introduce yourself to the Nemo friends. It's sort of like a like if Star Tours was bigger. Yeah. Like it, in more capacity, more people. It, it's not 3D. No. Nope. It didn't make me nauseous at all. It's really cute the concept too. You are going into a theater which is being shrunk down to the size of a fish and disguised as a fish. Yeah. So then all the Nemo characters think you're a fish and it, and they're big. Like it's it's adorable. It's just and we got to see Darla. It's true. You got to see Darla, but not Bruce. That's they picked one. A one choice. Yeah. Um, I also love that there are portholes on the sides. Yes. That's all yeah. the different than the simulator attraction yeah. we have in the states. Like you get characters that move off of the main screen, but they're still over here that you can sort of see. Very which is cool. fun. Yeah. I don't think this is a must do the way that some of the other stuff we've done is, but it's a very cute attraction. It was oh, yeah. on the uh, free premiere pass, so we didn't really wait in line for it. Yeah. And uh, now I think we're headed off. Back to America to see Joe Rohde. Yeah. Likeness. No, so, actually him. <laughs> we want a Tower Terror. <laughs> He's a meet greet here. Japan has everything. We were feeling a bit snacky, so we picked up the Mickey Ukiwa bun. Normally this is Donald, but for the 40th, they had its Mickey ears, and this life preserver is also a little burned with that 40 on the ear. This looks adorable, and I can't wait to bite into it. I've also just learned that Ukiwa means lifesaver, which makes sense, given the structure here. It's also a chicken bun, so I'm excited to dive. I don't know where to dive in. Hmm. <laughs> so it's very savory. It's very. It, it's actually really rich as well. It almost tastes like a little bit of a chicken noodle soup style taste with some umami flavor as well. I really enjoy the flavor. I think the texture of the bun is really enjoyable. It's just a delicious little snack. Up next, we are headed to Hotel Hightower, or as it's better known here, the Tower of Terror. It was the once residence of Harrison Hightower, the hotelier and adventurer, who after stealing a cursed idol and bringing it back to this hotel after a showcase, found himself cursed and his hotel as well. Into unintentional rhyme there, but I'll go with it. And now it has become the Tower of Terror. Now if you do see Harrison Hightower around the Tower of Terror, you might notice that he looks a little bit familiar because he does bear a striking resemblance in visage to one Mr. Joe Rohde. Beyond my overwhelming delight that Joe Rohde is the main character on this attraction, it is themed to perfection, which is no surprise because Tower of Terror style attractions usually are. Much like the one in Hollywood Studios, the lobby is falling apart, it's frozen in time, there's dust and dingy everywhere, but you can tell that in its heyday it was a beautiful hotel with gorgeous fine accents. Uh, I really liked where the elevator was crossed off because that's where the curse took place. <laughs>
And then after the pre-show, you end up in the basement area where Harrison Hightower is holding all of his antiquities that he's collected around the world. So different crates and statues and paintings. And we definitely walked slow through the queue to see if we could spot any Easter eggs and just to take in all the detail. before the attraction tickled me. They were nothing compared to what we found after. some things. Jinx, you owe me a cola. Did you hear that? This tower is <laughs> very haunted. Um, that was awesome. The theming is incredible. I The theming on this ride vehicle, this ride style around the world is amazing. Um, it, The detail in the hotel theme and the walking through with all of the pictures and the collectibles from Harrison Hightower. Like, I, was, I couldn't stop looking around. There's just a, ma a million things to look at. The story itself is also really cool. I, I just think, like, if you're going to retheme Tower of Terror and still have it be called Tower of Terror, mm -hmm. you want some of those elements to remain, right? Like, the abandoned hotel. But what's the story? How did it get here? Mm -hmm. And this was just such a fun play on that. Significantly spookier, I would agree. Oh, yeah, that idol is a nightmare. That pre-show is really cool, too, because the idol's there, and then all of a sudden it isn't. It there's some cool effects on the ride as well. Just all around a very, very good attraction. But none of that matters. The most important thing about this attraction is that at the end, you can see Harrison Hightower enjoying some leisurely activities. Ooh. Ooh. And yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. She's got the Riz. <laughs> the Rizzler. <laughs> Joe Rizzy. <laughs> He's oh. got his rizzing <laughs> yeah, on his he ear. Does. <laughs> nope. That's my favorite part. Nope. <laughs> no, Alan, let's make more Riz jokes. One of the coolest things I'm discovering about this park is that all the big giant set pieces you can go on. So like this beautiful SS Columbia ship here in the American waterfront. It is a walkthrough. It has a restaurant as well as a really cool lounge, which is where we're headed. It's called the Teddy Roosevelt Lounge. How many Titanic jokes do you think I can make before Max and Alan are annoyed with me? Let's try. Alan, do you know the name of the ship? SS Columbia. This is called the Ship of Dreams, and it was, it really was, to everyone but me. It was taking me back to America in chains. I've just suggested we're gonna die on this. <laughs> Don't be so blasé, Max. Hey, Alan, can you yes. teach me to spit like a man? Hey, Alan, this ship cannot sink. It's made of steel and iron, sir. I assure you she can. And she will, in less than two hours, Titanic with founder. One thing I'm still very much getting used to is the fact that things are done on the opposite side. So if we were in the United States, we'd be going up on the right side of the boat and down on the left, but it's opposite here. Wind. I fear the wind. You are my wife and practice if not yet by law, and you will honor me. Teddy Roosevelt Lounge aboard the SS Columbia is strange. There's bears everywhere and some other animals. There's political posters on the wall. As an American visiting Japan, it was a lot to take in. 
Alongside the signature beverages and classic cocktails at the Teddy Roosevelt Lounge, they had some bar bites, and then two platters for you to choose from. One a sandwich platter, and the other an appetizer platter. Sort of a sampler. I just don't know why Teddy Roosevelt has a lounge. Like, uh, why that president? I mean, sure, there are worse choices, but why Teddy Roosevelt? Is this how Teddy Roosevelt would decorate? Did Teddy Roosevelt have a lounge? Is this a recreation of a real lounge of Teddy Roosevelt's? Who chose to put this lounge on this ship? Was there a ship that looked like this that had a Teddy Roosevelt lounge? Why did Teddy Roosevelt choose all this food for his lounge? Where is his big stick? The sandwich plate had a shrimp and salmon trout sandwich along with fried chicken and waffles with maple syrup. Now of the two, the fried chicken and waffles was obviously my favorite, but I have to say that the shrimp sandwich was very tasty. I know I'm not normally a seafood guy, but I just found that every single bit of seafood I had in Japan was just better. The other appetizer was Around the Sea, which was very cute because it was designed to look with the little appetizer placements like a map of Disney Sea. On that platter was the salmon trout barquette with an uzu accent, a cheese brulee with barbecue sauce, red pepper and raspberry mousse, white liver terrine and ratatouille, chocolate tart and mandarin orange cream with nuts, marinated scallop with green apple jelly, beef mousse, and raspberry coulee. Of those, my favorite was the cheese brulee, which represented the American waterfront section of Disney Sea, as well as the raspberry coulee, which represented Mermaid Lagoon. And speaking of the Mermaid Lagoon, I had the Mermaid Lagoon non-alcoholic specialty beverage. Now this had blue syrup, muscat jelly dessert, seltzer, peach, and vanilla ice cream, and that peach flavor really came through. Um, this is one of the many specialty beverages named after the different ports. I enjoyed the vanilla ice cream on top, and that peach flavor was sweet, but not as sweet as it might be in a domestic park. Making it count. Oh my god. Alan and I picked some classic cocktails. He got a Manhattan, I got a martini, and they were certainly a stiff drink. Very well crafted, nothing that exciting or original, but it was a well crafted cocktail, and the lounge itself was really fun to experience. I loved the bizarre theming of it being Teddy Roosevelt, and I loved that you could go onto the ship and experience what would probably be a set piece in another park. They made it count. That's another Titanic joke. Where is the Teddy Roosevelt meet and greet? After our meal, we journeyed across the park to make it to the Lost River Delta and this roller coaster, Raging Spirits. This is a small roller coaster, just a little two car guy. Uh, it sits right next to Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Crystal Skull, themed around an archaeological dig where the raging spirits that you've upset may take your uh, loose items, if uh, any hats or ears or um, other devices fall out of your car. Coaster. Yeah. The spirits did not take my ears. Good news. Either pair. Great. I mean my real ears. Sure, yeah, I understand. Yes, you got it. Uh, it really reminded me of like Primeval World or Goofy Sky School in the sense of it's one of those where the car is bigger than the track and you're high up so it feels like you might fall over. But you get this beautiful view of the park up there. It's true. I love that they hid a loop inside that. That yeah. was just so neat. It's just, and it's like, just two cars going down. It's just you and, you know, it's not a ton of people, but it's a lot of fun. Close friends. Yeah. yeah. Not a must-do by any means, but if you're over here to visit Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Crystal Skull, stop by Raging Spirits. I do wish that they would take this concept and put it next to other Indiana Jones rides. I, I think it's so, you know, it's a little compact coaster, fits the theming. I think it's perfect for this park, and I wish it would be other places. I really like the theming at this, like walking through this land, this land is incredibly detailed and well themed. I mean, all this whole park is, that's what's amazing about this park. But this land in particular, getting in here, I was like, whoa, this is, I'm in a jungle. Yeah, beautiful. We got another snack. It's the sausage dog. Yeah. I, I told them they have to get it down lower to where it's just bread and then I'll eat it. Tastes like a hot dog? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mmm. 
Yeah. You want a hit? <laughs> oh! There's the... There's the spice at the end there. The sausage? Yeah. I mean the breads, it feels like a classic sort of French style hoagie style bread. The sausage has some... It's like cardamom. Oh, this is the ride. A little bit of like lighter style spices, like Mediterranean-ish. Almost a, almost like a light masala taste. It's very good. I like it. Molly got her spicy harissa. She can't live without it. It's so good. It's a hundred yen, and it's delicious. It's really hot. But it's great. Good snack. Good, good to hearty snack. I dig it. What's next on the list? I think we're going to the Arabian coast to meet a cute tiger. Mm. Worked our way into the Arabian coast and we're gonna ride Sinbad's Storybook Voyage. This is a dark ride, it's a boat ride that goes through the story of Sinbad, the legend of Sinbad. And I don't know much about it as I have purposely not researched what these attractions are like so I could be surprised. But all I know, the most important thing I know is that it features a cute little tiger named Shondu. And Max has assured me that I will be so in love with Shondu by the end of this, I will buy merchandise with this face on it. I get the Chandu hype. It was so cute. I, I mean, take him home. It's a classic water dark ride. I like the fact that, like Pirates, you have a song that takes you throughout the entirety of that attraction. It's a very different vibe. It's a little bit slower. Yeah. Um, I think it was cute. The song slaps. Big set pieces too. Big I set love. Pieces. That's the thing I remember the first time I ever wrote it. I was like. Whoa! Like, yeah. you just don't it's expect scale. the scale, which is so beautiful. The animatronics are wonderful, a must-do, a, a delightful little ride. And very, we've been watching the wait time and never anything. Yeah, so it's basically five minutes. It's a lost on me. I think Lovely. it's so beautiful, and I think anybody that's here should go on it. Yes. Very cute attraction. Big fan. We should find themed merchandise and or snacks to Chandu now. Chandu yes. Supremacy. Yes. Yeah. I just have to say again, the theming of this park is unbelievable. The closest thing I can compare it to is Animal Kingdom with the amount of depth and detail and just everywhere you look, it's perfect. You're completely immersed into whatever land you are in. 
We're currently in the Arabian coast and everywhere you look, you see that very unique style of architecture. There's signage from Princess Jasmine and Aladdin. There's paw prints like every single land we went into. I was like, this is the most immersive land. No, no, this is the most immersive land. Like I no video or pictures will ever do justice. The feeling of walking through this park. Lucky for us, there was a ton of Chandu merch for us to enjoy and check out from small keychain plush to large plushes to Goldilocks sized plushes to bags to all kinds of different items featuring the cutest tiger there's ever been. And we ended up adopting a couple of our own. Up next, we are headed to the carousel. Now what makes this caravan carousel unique is that it is two stories, a double deco carousel. And hidden amongst the animals that you will find on a carousel is also the genie from Aladdin. I know who Mal is going to be looking for. Next up, we went to Mermaid Lagoon, which is themed after Princess Ariel. Now, the exterior is absolutely beautiful. A ton of intricate rock work ending in King Triton's castle at the top. We also saw King Triton's statue as well. Just a very ripped merman. Merman. I wonder what his split is. Do you think he could tell me his macros? Like protein, carb, fat? It's his ab routine, because all eight of them are showing. And I thought Hercules had rippling pectorals. At this point, Max walked ahead of Alan and I and started shooting us. And I was like, oh, that's nice. He's taking some B-roll. But then I realized he wanted to capture our reaction to what we were about to see, which is under the sea. Where did this building come from? Like, we walk into this facade. There's no sign of it going to get much bigger. And we are actually upstairs of the ocean. Inside, there's like four rides. There's like a teacup style ride. There's a show. There's a huge merchandise shop with like a full size whale as the merchandise shop. There's a restaurant. There's a play area. There's jumping jellyfish. Like where did this come from? <laughs> Unfortunately, the mermaid show wasn't happening. So we decided to explore her underwater grotto. And there's a couple different sections of the grotto. And for some reason, the first one we went into was the Ursula one. <laughs> あんたのような不幸な人間を幸せにしてあげるのが私の仕事さ。There's something in there. I don't know what it is though. Maybe it just happens. Oh. If you couldn't tell, it's a shark. <laughs> <laughs> there are a few different interactive elements throughout this play area, definitely for adults. Um, like a couple of sails that you bounce your body between, or this fun um, wall light that I had as a kid where you would pose and it would take a flash shot and then your shadow would be left behind. It felt very like Peter Pan in that moment. And then in my opinion, we went to the coolest part, which is a full-size representation of Ariel's Grotto, complete with Prince Eric's statue. It also had a ton of Easter eggs located throughout that grotto as well. You had moving portraits of people like Grimsby. You had Sebastian who would appear and disappear, trapped in a bottle as he did in the film. You had Genie's lamp from Aladdin, as well as Chip from Beauty and the Beast. And they even faithfully represented the portrait of Magdalene with the smoking flame, which was also seen in Ariel's Grotto in the movie. We have returned to the American waterfront and the Broadway Music Theater for a show I am thrilled for Alan and Molly to get to see. We are going to go see Big Band Beat. Now, Big Band Beat is a full theater show using the music of the big band era, the 20s to the 40s, featuring some of your favorite Disney characters, Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Daisy, and Goofy. And, little spoiler, Mickey might show off a couple of talents you might not have known he had during this show. Now, pro tip, you this is a lottery that you have to enter on the app to get a ticket. However, we actually didn't get a ticket. We entered the park first thing and they were already gone. The mezzanine is standby. This show does happen several times throughout the day and if you show up, you are able to try to get into the mezzanine section. So uh, if you don't get into that lottery, definitely check out the mez. Unbelievable show. I've seen it on a past trip and I'm super excited for Molly and Alan to get to see it as well.
That combined two of my loves, big band music and Disney. Also, I've not ever seen Mickey Mouse move like that. <laughs> that was the most amazing stage show I've ever seen in the Disney park. Mickey is so talented. Very talented. Can he dance better in Japan? I, you know, he at least shows it off in a different yeah, way here. he is certainly. very talented. We saw Mickey tap dance? Very well. I haven't seen Mickey drum since California a couple of years ago. Saw Mickey drum? And he's very good. Quite good. I mean, listen, possibly my favorite rendition of Swing, Swing, Swing I've ever seen. And, okay, there were like 15 dancers on stage. I only had eyes for Mickey Mouse. Mm -hmm. That said, there are two male tap dancers in this oh, show that were incredible. Unbelievable. Just amazing. Yeah. Wow. This show happens five times a day. That was awesome. Yeah. What a great show. Although, I do have to do one thing. Yeah. To don't be a jerk in the park, can not say, about okay. theater shows. I'm just kidding. I would literally never have to do that here because everyone is so polite. True. Everyone True. sits down and takes their ears or their hat off. Yep. They Nobody films high if you're allowed to film. If you're not allowed to film, everyone puts their phone away. Nobody doesn't listen to the cast members. Yep. It's, it's unbelievable how culturally different it is than being in Florida or in California even. Yeah. But like literally they said please don't film or video or photos in the show. Every person in the theater to put their phone away. Not a single phone light was on the whole time. It's true. Wow. So you all loved it? Yeah it was Amazing. incredible. Big Ben Beat absolutely a must do if you are here at Disney Sea. Agreed. I think it's one of the best stage shows that Disney has ever put on and That's very awesome. unique, unique music for a Disney show. Yeah. Uh, unlike anything you'll see. Also this whole Amazing. section is adorable because it's themed to like old timey New York and as a lover of actual New York City, it's really fun to see the like take international on New York, yeah. take on New York at, you know, in, in its heyday. One fun bit of theming in the American waterfront is the McDuck's double store. It, it starts with the McDuck's department store on the front side and then McDuck's pawn shop in the back. It transitions theming from a upscale department store to where you can see the intake of pawn items. There's all kinds of fun elements here, such as a fountain full of gold coins out the front door. Uh, you can see the portraits of Scrooge McDuck inside, gold duck heads all throughout. In the pawn shop, you can see the items that they are willing to take in, as well as the price of all the different pond items that they have in the shop, the gold that they are accepting, and all the different forms. And this shop is full of Duffy merchandise, of course. I also loved the shop called Steamboat Mickey's, which is a nod to Mickey's debut in Steamboat Willie. There was a steamboat on the sign and a little model one inside. You want some snacks? I need a snack. Yes. Some snacks. We had our next treat in Toyville, which is a small section of the American waterfront themed to Toy Story. So naturally I loved it, except for I didn't because that giant Woody head, which is the facade to Toy Story Mania, is a nightmare. Uh, Toy Story Mania, incredibly popular, but the same attraction that you'd find uh, domestically as well. I did, however, really enjoy Mr. Potato Head. Instead of being part of the queue, he's just out and about, and he's saying, you've got a friend of me in Japanese. <laughs> One really cute detail is on the pillars welcoming you into Toyville, you've got a Rex and a ham statue. So very cute area. Glad we popped in for a snack and a quick show. Uh, and then we are on to our next adventure. We ended up trying all three ice creams from the cart outside Toyville. It was a Mickey-shaped ice bar, which was tropical punch flavor, an ice cream sandwich that was tiramisu, and a sea salt raspberry seashell ice cream, which was kind of like an enclosed ice cream sandwich with a raspberry sauce and ice cream. All three of these were fantastic. I could eat these any day when going to a park. The ice bar was nice and refreshing. The vanilla and raspberry seashell had a nice fruity flavor, but it wasn't artificially sweet. But the tiramisu ice cream sandwich, I'm gonna dream about it for years to come. It was chocolatey, it had a little coffee flavor, creamy ice cream. All three of these were a winner. And if you go to Tokyo Disney, put these on your list. We had some delicious ice cream cart treats in the nightmare section, I mean, Woody's mouth section, I mean, Toy Story section of the American waterfront. Watch Mr. Potato Head sing, you've got a friend of me in Japanese. 
And now we are headed back into the Cape Cod section of the American waterfront, which is themed after Cape Cod. But it's Cape Cod as if Duffy and Friends have taken over. If you don't know who Duffy and Friends are, Duffy is Mickey's teddy bear that Minnie gave to him when he came to Tokyo to open up Tokyo Disneyland. And he's very popular here. Duffy, as a character, is an adorable bear, and he became incredibly popular here in Japan, so they have added more and more characters into the Duff universe. His lady bear is Shelly Mae. He also has a cat friend named Gelatoni, a bunny friend named Stella Lou, a dog friend named Cookie Ann, and a turtle friend named Olu Mel and lastly a fox named Lena Bell and they are incredibly popular here in Tokyo. And when I say incredibly popular, I mean we have seen hundreds of people, adults mostly, wearing the ears of their favorite of Duffy and Friends characters or holding some kind of merchandise or dressed up like them, carrying an actual plush. It is so popular that there are literal photo spots around this area of the park for your Duffy or friend. Like the same way there's photo ops for humans, but for plushes. Anyway, I'm obsessed with Shelly Mae. I have loved her since I worked at Disney over a decade ago when I heard about her. I thought she was the cutest thing ever. And any of the Japanese guests that would have her keychain or have something on it, I would get really excited about. And actually one of my coworkers who was a Japanese international um, intern, she gave me a Shelly Mae. So I love Shelly Mae. You cannot meet her in the United States, but we are in line to meet her now and dreams are coming true. Is the place like it's the place I like to be when I'm not under the sea. Princess Jasmine said, thank you for showing us Cape Cod Village. It's a whole new world. Boats, boats, boats. <laughs> Welcome to Cape Cod for the sailing. We have discovered the guest book of Cape Cod, and it's signed by everyone from Aladdin to Scrooge McDuck to Theodore Roosevelt. <laughs> So now it's, re it's really gone off the rails. It was already enough that there's a Teddy Roosevelt themed lounge in this Japanese park. That's fine. I still don't know why that president. But now I am to believe that Teddy Roosevelt, along with Ariel and Jasmine and Aladdin, have visited Duffy. So Teddy Roosevelt canonically has visited Disney Sea, along with other Disney characters, to see Duffy. Where, again, is the Teddy Roosevelt meet and greet? All right, here's the guide. All right, now you do one of the Duffy's poses. Are, are you being silly? <laughs> silly. I love it. <laughs> are you whispering? Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello again. The Duffy knot looks practical. <laughs> I wanted to meet you for a very long time. Yeah, I look very far away. And you don't, you don't visit Florida. Yeah, no, you never been. <laughs> What I'm giving Shelly May there, by the way, is one of those little you're great banners from the cast member on the first day because she is great. <laughs> Oh, we save it right there. Oh, hi, oh, thank you. So good to see you. <laughs> so, how you doing? When I worked in guest relations, uh, I don't know, a million years ago, and I just always wanted to meet her, and she's here all the way in Japan, and we are too, and yeah, okay, we can do what you want now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Up next, we are heading to Soaring Fantastic Flight, which is Tokyo Disney Sea's version of Soren. Now, it does have a fully reimagined storyline following Camille Falco, who is a well known member of the SEA, or Society of Explorers and Adventurers. Now, the members of the SEA are wide and varied throughout the Disney lexicon, from Indiana Jones to the members of the Adventurers Club from Pleasure Island. And you can find them well represented here in Tokyo Disney Sea. In fact, Harrison Hightower, the owner of the Hightower Hotel or Tower of Terror, is also a member of the SEA. The biggest difference between Soarin Stateside and Soaring in Disney Sea is the queue and the general theming. Where well, Stateside, you're getting a history or sort of a look into aviation. In Disney Sea, it is centered around Camilla Falco and her invention of a flying machine. And now you are going to take a flight on that flying machine as well. Also falcons. A lot of falcons. I'm not, I'm not unconvinced that it's just a falcon based ride. seen a lot of that attraction before, but not the ending. No. Yeah, the ending was new. Now, we did use Premier Access for this, so we did pay to skip the line for this attraction. I don't know if I'd wait in this queue for this attraction, having seen Soren Around the World before. Yeah. But I did like going through Tokyo for and the, the end. And the pre-show was very pre -show cool. pre-show is so very cute. Cool. I... Uh, is the reason that Camilla is a falconeer because because that one falcon and that one yeah, one yeah, falcon yeah I, and that one scene. I had the same thought. Mm -hmm. So the whole story behind Camilla is that she's a falconeer and she has a falcon. And if you've ridden soaring around the world in other parks, you know that at one point the transition is a falcon swooping across, and the falcon plays a key part in the story. I I don't think that that's that crazy. I think they themed I this think whole ride. I think they did it her around that falcon in that one transition in soaring. I think the so world. too because it'd be it'd be. No, it would be crazy if she was like, oh, had a whale. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, she like, just has like, an orca. She's an orca trainer. Camilla like, the orca Like, they were like, yeah. can't do that. Controversial. We'll give yeah. her a bird. There, there's a falcon. All yeah. Right. Yeah. Somebody else is like, Put she could, somebody, somebody's like, she could be the dust. And they're like, get out of here, Greg. <laughs> Greg this, isn't the, gonna, this isn't the end, end game. She's not going to be the dust from the she pyramid. Could be, she could be the moment the... Uh, Taj Mahal looks like a balloon. Oh, you know? sure. She sure. could Another look like option. a balloon. She could have been the kite at Great Wall of China. But yeah. no, she's a falconeer. Yeah, it works. I think it works. Well, with that, tonight we're moving on to our final show yeah. of the evening. It's called Believe Sea of Dreams. It's going to be out on the lagoon here in front of the volcano. I believe it to be a 40th anniversary special show. We're not really sure what kind of show, though, because water... So maybe World of Color-esque? We're gonna find out together, but we got Premier Access, so let's go find our seat. Yeah.
Nighttime spectacular I've ever seen. I couldn't agree more. And let me just say this before we dive into it: no video we ever take could do this show justice ever. There's no video that does many nighttime shows justice, but this nighttime show is over here, oh, hold, hold, hold. all the way to the volcano. It's like volcano? from the volcano all the way, all the way around the whole. No shot. I cried. I cried. I cried. A lot of tears were three shed. Three for three. Three for three on that one. I mean, th this tower behind us, where did it come from, first of all? I don't <laughs> know. It moves so much. We sat down for the show. We're all like, that is new. I, I like, I, we sat down for the show. And it was like, oh, it's going to put like a net of water out. We'll project a, on it. We'll be like, oh, like fan. Nope. No, it moved. It shot fireworks. It did squirt water. Also, hey, Epcot. It's possible to have floats that collapse, just so you know. Hey, we saw, true. We, we saw, we saw it right now. That's a fact. Also, like, the volcano erupted. Oh, my God. Yeah, during the Moana scene, they were like, we literally can do the Tafiti Moana <laughs> moment, the battle, like, we have a volcano. <laughs> also, we had Elsa on her water horse, running on the water. I, I, I want to kiss whoever did a mashup of part of your world, a whole new world, and I see the light, while the most beautiful floats were out with these LED lights, the characters are out, that oh. montage made me start crying and then I didn't stop till the end. Yeah. There was also an Into the Unknown and a um, Moana. Well, there's really not words. It's incredible. Wow, that was amazing. I highly, highly recommend if you're here getting that reserved access. This word worked a little bit differently than it did for the parades yesterday at Tokyo Disneyland. We didn't have an assigned spot, but we had an assigned section. We had a great seat, great view, walked up like 15 minutes before it started. Uh, Must do. Must do. Wow. Wow. Well, want to go right Indy? Yeah. One attraction left for the night. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Let's go. I'm, I'm invigorated. Well, we caught the fireworks that we missed last night because of the wind on our way to our final attraction. What's super interesting here is that the two parks share a fireworks show. You can see the fireworks from both Disney Sea and Disneyland. So they just pipe the music in both parks and you can rock and roll. Also interesting, their nighttime fireworks show was five minutes long, which is much shorter than a nighttime fireworks show at like Magic Kingdom or Disneyland. But it was still fun, it was beautiful, had great music. They're vibing right now with the uh, 40th anniversary theme song and we're headed to Indiana Jones. We are ending our evening with the Indiana Jones Adventure Temple of the Crystal Skull. This is one of the 40th anniversary premiere pass attractions, which means it's a free fast pass attraction. We booked this after some other ones today. 
because why not? It is a similar style attraction to the Indiana Jones attraction in Disneyland, if you haven't been there, which is a similar vehicle to Dinosaur in Disney's Animal Kingdom. Uh, slightly different though, so I'm excited to see it, especially because Indiana Jones is one of my favorite rides in Disneyland. So I think it'll be a great way to end the night. <laughs> That's that, about right. That was very, very similar to Disneyland, yeah. and I'm actually going to give it to Disneyland because with the updated effects and the fire and the new projections and everything, I actually think theirs is a little bit cleaner, but Indiana Jones is an incredible attraction no matter where you are, and it was a really fun way to end the night. We did go back to Disney Sea on a bonus off-camera day and got a couple of other snacks, including stopping at the Breezeway Bites to get what was called a fried pizza. It kind of was like a Hot Pocket or a calzone. It had chicken and mozzarella. The chicken was sort of interesting. I think in the States we would have had pepperoni, but it was quite good. We also picked up the ramen slush, which was mostly just frozen solid. But once we got through to actually tasting the slush, it was ever so lightly of ramen and very refreshing. The odd part about it was the whipped topping. That one was sweet and tasted a little bit uh, a little bit like cake is the best thing I could describe it as. But otherwise, I mean, it's just a fairly standard slush. I will say it was not as sweet as a similar slush that you would be getting in the States. We actually divided and conquered these snacks because while the boys waited in line in Port Discovery for the fried pizza and the slush, I went over to Mysterious Island into the volcano to grab probably the most popular and most famous snack from Tokyo Disney Sea. And once again, I'm already in a volcano, there's a ride in a volcano, there's a cavern behind the volcano that you can look down into and see the Nautilus from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and oh yeah, you can go down on that level too. Anyway, right by the Nautilus is the Nautilus Galley where you can grab a couple bites, including the gyoza dog, which is essentially just a really big pork gyoza. It had a really soft and tender bun, tender pork and some vegetables inside. This easily cracks my top favorite snacks in Disney. Now, popcorn is very, very popular here in the Japan parks. In fact, there are individual carts located throughout both of the theme parks that serve one specific flavor, and we were on a quest to find the curry popcorn because it's the one I wanted the most, and I was not disappointed. It was by far my favorite popcorn I had on the trip. You could very clearly taste that masala taste with a little bit of cumin. I loved it. I'm dreaming about it now. And speaking of exploring the park, we then went to the Fortress Explorations, which when looking at the volcano, there's all kinds of kind of Renaissance style fortresses nearby, and you can actually go into those places, which is one of the things I think makes Tokyo Disney Sea so special. And um, we did some exploring and, you know, scouting for the lava business. <laughs> while walking on the American waterfront, a detail I had not seen on my previous trips to Tokyo Disney Sea. First, a sign on a bridge between the New York and Cape Cod sections of the American waterfront. A sign on one side of the bridge said, on this date in 1774, the brave men of Cape Cod Village fired the shot heard down the road. That might sound like the shot heard around the world to you, but no, just wait for it because if you go to the other side of the bridge, you'll find a similar but different sign that said it was on this spot that a mysterious shot was heard, thus triggering the Great American Waterfront Stampede of 1774. What was your favorite part of the day? 
maybe these guests that have their lights going oh my right God, now. This is so cute. So around this area of the park is Hotel Miracasa, which is a Disney hotel, and there are guests all around with their flashlights on on their phones, waving at the guests leaving and doing little dances and stuff, and it's just like so, so sweet. Yeah, yeah. quintessential. That for, somehow that sums up, I think, this whole experience of being here is just that. Like, yeah. there's so much. So much giving and from, from just one to another. Joy. Yeah. Just joy. Um, okay, but my real answer for best part of the day? Belief. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the easy answer. <laughs> yeah. It's just, that's it's good. just so it was amazing. good. It was amazing. Okay, yeah. favorite ride? Um, ooh. Let's say favorite attraction, not belief. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, I think it's going to be Journey to the Center of the Earth for me, followed yeah. closely by Tower of Terror. I'm going to go Tower of Terror. I think the way they designed it, the story here, the theming, incredible. An attraction I've been on a hundred times felt completely new. Yeah. Uh, ride, I'll give it to Sinbad's. I just, I so cute. Oh, love a little Chandu. Little and a but really great score. Alan, oh, Mank beautiful. Alan Mankin wrote that song. Beautiful score. Chandu. Chandu. Um, but if I take Ride out, God, give it up to Big Band B. Oh, oh my gosh! Oh sure. That is sure. such a so good cool. show. So cool. Also meeting Shelly May. Of course. Yes. That, that's of course. A, really just a, a great day all around. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. And our favorite snack today. Mm, I'm gonna go with the ukiwa bun. Uh, oh, early so on, the good. first snack we had the little lifesaver. It was very uh, tasty. So tasty. Probably the sea salt ice cream. I didn't think I'd be going oh. with the sweet, but that was just such a nice. I'm shocked myself that I'm putting an ice cream on a favorite all, snack. All today. three ice cream, all of those ice cream were good. so good. The tiramisu yeah. and the little uh, the ice tropical pop. ice Mickey pop. Mm. I'm going for more ambiance than actual food, but I loved the Teddy Roosevelt lounge. <laughs> the fact that you're on the ocean liner is very, very cool. And then it's just like bizarro town to me that there's a whole lounge theme to a president. <laughs> Where is the Teddy Roosevelt character meet and greet? Give the people what they Give want. Give the people what they Give want. Give the people what they want. Honestly, he signed the Cape Cod guest book. <laughs> He should have a meet and greet. That is Teddy Roosevelt's Mojo Dojo Casa House, and I will not hear otherwise. <laughs> Hello, it's Future Molly again. Just like in the Tokyo Disneyland video, before our past selves wrap up the video while still in Japan, we wanted to get together to talk about some of the highlights of the day, some of the main differences we noticed, and just overall how we felt about going to Disney Sea. So let's roll that recap. First of all, coming in with those planes again. Very weird to see airplanes, and not only airplanes in this park, the ocean, uh, Mount Fuji, you could see it. We saw it uh, as we were on the monorail on the way there. If it's clear enough, you can see it. The city, like, it's just so not what you see if you look around a theme park anywhere else. I just want to say that there are no facades. Everywhere in this park is explorable. And that is just so amazing to me that you can be like, hey, that's a cool spot. Yeah, let's go walk through it. The number of times that I was like, that looks neat. Max is like, well, let's go explore it. I was like, I'm sorry, come again? Yeah, like the lighthouse in we, Cape Cod. You can, can go in there. We can just go yes. in it? What? Uh, similar to that, the amount of layers of this park, the amount of little places that are tucked and hidden away. We spent a whole 13, 14 hours in there one day. And on our second day, I had to use the restroom and I was like, oh, there's a sign that says one over here. Walked under an archway. Oh, now we're in Venice. Where did this come from? Like how, how did I spend a whole day walking what I thought was every inch of this park only to find a section almost as big as the Italy pavilion just tucked away? Like what? Yeah, I think the ultimate takeaway of this park, you know, we talked about in this video, we talked about in the Tokyo Disneyland video, like the cast members are amazing, the absolute just courtesy for your fellow guests. You can bring in a full meal into a theater show here because people will actually throw the trash away. You can't bring in full meals to the Hyperion Theater in DCA because, yeah. Um, so just the general courtesy for your fellow guests, for the cast members is so apparent, but I think the biggest takeaway from Tokyo Disney Sea specifically is just how immersive it is. It it moved me to tears walking through the park multiple times because yes, the rides are great, yes, the shows, yes, the food is all great, but just the level of detail and immersion in this park is unlike anywhere else. The the closest thing I can equate it to is certain parts of Animal Kingdom or maybe Diagon Alley. But imagine that scale of detail 
for Everywhere. a huge part. Everywhere. I don't know. I just want another president-themed bar. Give me my Rutherford B. Hayes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where's the Millard Fillmore Lounge? <laughs> William Howard Taft. <laughs> Come Bring on. me the Taft Lounge. <laughs> the Calvin Coolidge Cantina. Let's make it happen. <laughs> this will go on for a while. But, <laughs> friends, be sure to like the video. Subscribe if you are new. Follow us on all of our socials. And if you want to talk about this video or any of our other videos, join us on Discord. The links for all that are down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. I'm Alan. And I'm Max. And it has been truly so magical and a perfect day here at Disney Sea. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. But the volcano during Believe, though. It literally erupted. It, With this, opportunity. It's a lava-themed park. Oh. You heard it here.